Yo, number one show in late night. Yo, Miro, who do we got in the building tonight? You might have seen him as Black Manta. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You might have seen him as Dr. Manhattan. Uh -huh. You gonna see him as the Candyman. You know what I'm saying? Yaya Abdul Mateen the second. Yeah, yeah, yo, what's going on, my man? Thank you for joining us. How's it going, man? Man, I'm good. I'm feeling great, man. How about that introduction, man? Shit, I ain't That's never what got I'm one talking of them. About. You know what I'm I ain't never got one of them before. You know what I'm saying? You I earned that right there, man. <laughs> you, that's, that's what I try to do every time because a lot of people like to be humble. You know what I'm saying? When they have achieved a lot of success, you know what I'm saying? So I'm here to be yeah. your humble translator. We go yeah, dump the humble it, shit. You can stay. So you listen, stay yeah, humble. Yeah, I'm gonna be a humble right, on your behalf. Yeah, yeah, humility come with that. I yeah, you've been doing that, the though. work, man. You've been doing the work. You've been in a lot Thanks. of roles. You, you're one of those guys that you're just like, wait, where do I know him from? And then yep. you're just like, oh, wow. And then when you realize this, it, you're like, yo, that place. was just some background yeah. role. Like, he had a main... You've been out here, man. How, what's it like? Because you, your, your career right now, you're so hot right now. You, you're hitting on all the projects. What's it feeling like? Man, right now is a... Uh, it's a whole storm right now. You know, I'm just coming off of the, uh, coming off of the Emmy. You mm -hmm. know, I, that was, that was uh, both... Thank you. I appreciate it. That was unexpected. Mm -hmm. That was exciting. I'm in um I'm in Berlin right now doing the Matrix. You know, mm -hmm. we 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 uh Ooh. moving through that production. Nice. Uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, man. You know, I, I really I, you know, this thing really took off for me in uh, about you know 2016 with the get down, and I've been yeah, able yes. to be versatile since then. You know what I'm saying? That's that's mm -hmm. really been the name of the game for me, is being, you know, being able to put myself around the tastemakers and yeah. uh, you know, just just not not pin myself down in the box. So it's funny, you, you, you know, when you say, you know, this cat pop up everywhere. You know, I kind of try to make sure that I can be versatile like that so that, uh, you know, so that shit, I could do whatever I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah you've been dope, everywhere. Man. And shout out to the Get Down BX all day. You know, that's where we're from. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's how we just down. Gave our give yeah. girls some love. But yeah, you, you've been in all those roles. You got your Aquaman roles wild. Got to hit you on this one. Black Mirror, my guy. Oh, yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? High left, high left. That, you you, you, you kind of <laughs> made it hard for me to play video games with my boys now. Like, you put a lot of hey, pressure hey. on the kid. Now, what was it like when you saw that script? Because, you know, Black Mirror is always, like, a mind fuck. But then to have two black guys in that role, and it, you guys played the hell out of that. Like, it was, Man, it was so good. About, let, me, let me tell you something about Black Mirror. Black Mirror is one of those shows where I watched it, I think it was, like, season one, episode two. And they had mm -hmm. this situation where, have you seen the one where they had the little camera things in their eyes. In and you the can eyes, go back and you can rewind. Yes. And you can rewind it. Dog, that one, that episode had me, had me hot, dog. That yeah. episode had me hot. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> the thing I love about, you know, it was just like, man, I don't, I don't even want to mess around with no technology like that. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. The thing about this show is that it poses these type of questions where, you know, it puts you in the situations where you have these, where you can have these heated, heated moral debates, you know, these, mm -hmm. these what would you do type of scenarios. And what I saw with my character was, you know, everybody was looking at the sexuality of it all. And I was looking at a cat who was just like addicted. You know, I, I went, you know, I approached that from the perspective of a dude that was just addicted to this type of companionship, like this new sensation that he had never had never felt before. Mm -hmm. And I really had fun, you know, making this character who would do anything, who would disturb yeah. all the peace. You know, he's showing up at the, you know, he's showing up at dinner time. Like, he the side chick, you know Bro, what I'm saying? That was, I was <laughs> watching that. I was like, yo, I feel so uncomfortable because I've been here before. Like, <laughs> so good, man. Out, man. Oh. But those type of characters are cool where you get to stretch and you get to kind of, you know, wild out, make people uncomfortable and things like mm -hmm. that because eventually those are the type of things that, you know, that people remember. And then I can go and I can go and do the other things. You know, I think when you... You know, when I, when I, my calling card right now is sort of, you know, I try to work with the tastemakers and I try to make sure that I stay versatile enough that I can go and do anything. So I don't mind going and doing something a little bit mind bending like a black mirror because I know I can then turn the page and then get, then go do like a, a Handmaid's Tale or like a Bobby Seal or something like mm -hmm. that. And then, I, you know, my Aquaman bag for a little bit. So, you know, I, yeah. I just try to mix it yeah. up. Man. Love it. Love so, it. yo, that, you just dropped the jewel, B, because, like, a lot of a lot of young actors think that they got to stick to, like, a certain lane or a certain role or whatever, and, yeah. like, versatility just kind of opens up the world for you because you can turn around, do a drama, do a comedy, do, do you yeah. started doing musicals, and then from yeah. there you went, dove yeah. all in, all over the place. Because it's about, it's about freedom, right? It's about freedom, mm -hmm. freedom of choice, and especially with black actors. I'm working on The Matrix right now, and uh, about a month back, we went and we did a, uh, Keanu had a screening of a uh, fucking Bill and Ted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. to me, that made me say, man, what black actor 
can do, can be the lead in the film like The Matrix and then go do Bill and Ted. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And if Keanu wanted to go and do, you know, some dramatic stuff, like a little independent dramatic film, guess yep. what? The seat's going to fill up too. That's right. called artistic freedom. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm after that same thing. And I would inspire uh, uh, or I would sort of implore other young artists, actors, you know, to go and be able to, you know, to 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 explore doing the same thing if they have the appetite to do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, yeah, don't, right. and don't limit themselves because... I want to be able to go and do my Pineapple Express. You know what I'm saying? Right, and then right, I want to be yeah. able to go and do my Watchmen. And, and, and you know, because I'm an, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an actor. You know what I yes. mean? And so that means that I should have, you know, the freedom to be able to flex however I, however I want to flex, you know? So oh. I think that's really what I'm after right now is artistic, just complete artistic freedom, which means that nobody can tell me what I have to do, you know, right. which means that I'm, I'm the one in the driver's seat of this machine. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So speaking that's of people telling right you what you have to do, Sure, you sure. are one of the carryovers from the original Watchmen, Dr. Manhattan. Is yep. there anything from like, you know, that the, I don't want to call them comic book nerds because that's kind of pejorative, but like the fanatics, yeah, yeah, yeah. the fans, that they, that do they hit you up and like, he would never do that. That's not a character for him. Also, follow up question. What's up with the blue dick, my guy? We got blue dicks all over the place. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shorty got the blue dildo that looks like it was made by Dyson. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> well, I want to go, man, Dr. Manhattan, he was the, he was the magic man. I mean, I'm, I right. mean, so you know what I'm saying? What can you say? Uh, yeah, shit, the magic somebody, stick. <laughs> I, hey, you know what? I didn't say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> smart man, smart man. I didn't oh. say it. But look, oh. if she was, look, what well, he disappeared in what, like 1986 or something like mm-hmm. that. And so she mm-hmm. been, she been carrying, she been carrying around that case for a long, for, for, for a long time. I put out this document here and I imagine that's a tough act to follow. He's a God, right. you know what I'm saying? He could be in the past and the future, multiply, everybody know the comics, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. that's a tough act to follow. Uh, but no, nah, man, you know, I try to, you know, listen to what the fans, you know, I try to value the fans opinion because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are going to be, you know, the toughest toughest critics you yeah. know but then i also have to do what i want to do as well so with stuff like that even with black manta you know when i do stuff that comes out of a comic where it already has a fan base then i make sure that i try to honor that i try to honor that history i'm not just gonna come in and just you know do my own thing and disrespect it i want to honor that history but then i want to introduce them to what attracts me to it because if i'm doing it just for them they're not even gonna like it you know what i'm right. saying they're gonna be like you know they you can't it's satisfy somebody trying to Exactly. You know, right. I can't satisfy them trying to do what they want me to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to offer, also offer something that they didn't even know that they wanted at the same time. So mm-hmm. that's sort of my approach when I'm doing, you know, the, the when I'm working in the comic book world. That's gotcha. dope, man. Yeah, you so got to man. What made you get into acting in the first place? Like, what made, did you see a certain movie or you see a certain role? Was there a certain person that you was like, damn, I want to do that? Or was it just natural? You know, it's interesting, man. I always wanted to be an architect. I, I went to Berkeley. I studied mm-hmm. architecture, uh, nice. ran track. And I, um, my sophomore year, we was doing some like a team building exercise where the underclassmen had to uh, had to perform skits for the upperclassmen. I go out there on stage and I do my impersonation of all the coaches and things like that. Yeah. Everybody cracking up laughing. Next day at uh, at practice, they still talking about it. And my dude JP, he says uh, he said, dude, he said uh, he said, dude, you should take a theater class. It's just like recess. Oh yeah. And so I was like, well shit, you know, easy. Let's aim. go. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. <laughs> right. So I go and I do uh I watch Baby Boy looking for monologues. And I do the Bing Rames Guns of Butter monologue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I come out there with my pen. I'm smoking a pen because Ben Bing Rames had a cigar. So I come out there with smoking a pen. You know, two little white girls in the front. Beautiful people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They 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 sort of uh, you know, running the auditions. And I'm looking them dead in the eyes. I'm looking them dead in the eyes. You know, breaking rule number one. I get there. I'm doing my whole guns and butter monologue. At the end of it, yeah. I say, you dumb mother. I say, you dumb motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? I'm just <laughs> giving it to them. And, uh, and shit, I got into the class. I, I had fun. And, and really, that was, that was really the, the seed. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah. found something that was fun. Eventually, it wasn't that straightforward. Eventually, I worked in city planning. I got laid off, and then I decided. I said, "Look, I want to go and just try to have some fun. Just go try it." And yeah. um, I messed around and got, you know, got in a, got into graduate school. And then uh, one thing led to another. You know, that was I got laid off in what October 2010. Got in graduate school in 2012, and 
graduated in 15. So everything just kind of been rolling rolling since then. Yeah, everything seems to be working out pretty well for you well, yeah, so yeah, far. Yeah, 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 yeah. You man. got you got a little a little film coming out, a little something called Candyman. I don't Candyman, know if... bro, yeah, classic yeah, shit. Yeah. Haven't heard much about it, you know. <gasps> now I want to come... working with you know, you're working with the the the, the, the homie Jordan Peele. Listen, yeah, how, what, what's yeah, that yeah, like? Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm very very excited about Candyman, you know, especially for our Candyman to take place. We went back to Chicago, got back on the streets in in uh, Cabrini Green, so it's very mm -hmm. much a Chicago movie. Oh, and wow, what I love Cabrini about Green. it is that you know, in this climate, we you know, we kind of taking this idea of uh, monsters, you know what I'm saying, and and, mm -hmm. and saying, well, how does the how did Candyman turn into a monster, you know? Right. And a lot of times, if you look at society today, you look at uh, you don't have to look far. Let's say George Floyd for an example black man who was murdered mm -hmm. and immediately after he's vilified, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. right. our movie is sort of, you know, along with the horror themes, it's also about the horrors of uh, how black victims of white violence are turned into monsters against their, against their own will. And then what mm -hmm. are the consequences of, of that type of thing, you know? So what are the consequences of creating these monsters and what, and what happens if these monsters strike back? You know what I'm saying? So that's it. So so that so that's some you know some of the things that we you know dealing with with uh, Candyman. Nia DaCosta is a real real dope, exciting director. Uh, mm -hmm. You know we already know what Jordan Peele can do. So so I'm Literally. real real excited to bring that you know bring that to the screens next year. And that's uh, still releasing in theaters, right? Or is there any? Yeah 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be in theaters. Uh, 2021. We don't got a date yet, but you know it's it's been pushing because you know we want people to be able to have that experience in the theaters. Yeah, yeah, man. Talk back to the wait, screen and waiting, all that. You know, through the yeah. whole time. decades. We, we, yeah, we, yeah, the hood been waiting decades, bro. Because we had like a legit <laughs> horror film. It's always like some kind of like goofy, like leprechauns in the hood type of situation. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. this is like a legit. You know what I'm saying? Like horror movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know so I mean? I'm excited. I'm excited to bring that. You know what I mean? So how you how you handling the pandemic? You just working through it, just powering through. Or... Man, I've been I've been I've been real blessed to be one of those one of the few actors, really in the world that's been kind of working directly mm -hmm. through this pandemic. You know, so I'm blessed in that way. You know, everything is everything is good on the professional uh, front. Uh, being in Berlin, I'm away from the family. You know, the family can't can't travel yeah. over here. So that's been that's been tough, but you know, I'm, I'm just, it's, it's, it's really just one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, you know, I send all my prayers back home. Hopefully everybody's safe. My family's been able to be safe throughout it. And man, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Going through this, trying to figure out how to, you know, how to make it day after day yeah. and uh, get on the, get on the other side of this thing. This thing is wild, man. It's you know, wild, bro. we, we, we in the middle of real history right now, yeah. you know, real, this real is... history. And you very rarely get to realize that you're in history, right? You know, mm -hmm. you sort of look yeah. back and say, oh, we were in a, in a historic moment, you know, at that yeah. time. But yeah. right now, you can look left and right, and you know that you're in it. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, future generations going to look at us in the textbook like, yo, you really, yo, y'all was really out here in mass right. every day. Right. It was like, yeah, bro. Right. Like, this well, interview is going to be in somebody's syllabus. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? In 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, man. But, so but the yeah, part, you know, you that? ask me, it depends on the day. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you. I'm glad you're making it out here, man. I'm glad you're yeah, getting through. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing to relax? Like when you're not in front of the cameras, like what do you do to chill? Word. What's your, your self care routine? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because I know, I, you know I roll a little something right. up, play a little Call of Duty, All right. whatever. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love basketball. I'm nice. always. Okay. I'm either playing basketball or watching basketball. All right. Uh, all right. The office. The, the office is like my my guilty pleasure. I could just kind of lunch out. Lunch out Throw and watch on. the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Hennessy ain't never did me wrong. You know what I'm saying? That brown uh, liquor. Yeah. Ain't never did me wrong. A lot of bit of Hennessy ain't never did me wrong. I'll yeah. put it that. I'll put it that way. That's it. <laughs> right? you know Real niggas only. Real niggas but, in the building. You know oh man. I'm super. I took the, the super. The Henny blue thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hold on, no, no, hold on. That's called the uh, that's called the hypnotic right there. The, uh, the <laughs> Henny and the, the Incredible hypnotic. Hawk. Yeah, that's the hypnotic. Hey, that's a make yourself hey, that Incredible long, Hawk. Yeah, that's a long night. That's it. That's up. Hey, hey, bro, that's look. A that's that's a I, I'm seeing that on the Vegas Strip, the big blue joint with the drink in it, with the straw on the top. Listen, oh, that man. No more, man. cash out, Yo, bro. Get that bachelor listen. party money. <laughs> listen, what, once we start talking about Hennessy dicks, that might be time to wrap it up, bro. Yo, yeah, yeah. Thank you for this interview, my guy. 
Yo, everyone that comes on the show is an illustrious guest, and they get a neon sign that can say whatever they want the world to see. Oh, what would your neon right. sign say? Oh, let's say uh, unapologetic. Unapologetic. My God, Unapologetic. Right here. Yeah, Boy, that's yeah, better yeah, than Henny Dick, though, right? Yeah, it is better. A little <laughs> bit better. <laughs> it's better. A yeah. little, it's, yeah. it's not it's really. Hey, 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 let's keep it real. It's not really. It's, it's more not professional. Really. But it's more professional. It's so. more professional. All right. That unapologetic is your work email. Hennessy Dick is your play email. So you know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. put a breakfast. It's Henny Dick. Hennessy Dick. Yeah. Yo, hey, yo. hey, hey. I appreciate y'all, man. Real yo, talk. We, we appreciate get you. Real. One time, man. Definitely, Thank my brother. You, bro. Keep doing appreciate your thing. You. Keep making that great entertainment we love. Yo, give yo, it up to Yaya. Yo, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace, peace. Love.